All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's event. We're going to get started here. My name is Jason Gumpert. I'm with msdynamicsworld.com, and we're here for a new session on Dynamics 365 for high-tech industries. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, three subject matter experts from Armenino today, Chris Moore, Scott Mangelson, uh, who will be joining in just a moment, and Jeff Russell to present to us. And as we get started, I just wanted to note a couple of things. You can add your feedback and ask questions using the Q&A block that you should see to the right of the main presentation window. Uh, ask questions. You can ask questions at any point. I know that our uh, presenters will be making time. We also have a, a quick poll that we wanted to put up there just to gauge and learn a little bit more about you in the audience. So I've, I've opened that up now, and that will stay up for uh, just a, a couple minutes here while we uh, get your input. And uh, finally, uh, yeah, we just want to, we look forward to uh, today's event. I look forward to welcoming our presenters today. Uh, so without further delay, I'm going to hand things off uh, to Chris Moore to get things started. Chris. All right, Jason. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. We really appreciate you guys joining on, especially a short week, and I hope everyone has a, a, a really good uh, holiday weekend. Um, like Jason mentioned, you know, any questions that come up, we'll, uh, we'll save time at the end to make sure that we address those. Um, we expect the session today to go about 35, 40 minutes. And the overall objective of today's session is really providing education, right? Education around what Dynamics 365 is. I've got a lot of my customers and prospects asking me questions about, you know, the common data model and the architecture and, you know, what's new about Dynamics 365. So we're going to address some of those as part of the session. The second important part of today's session is really to introduce you to Armanino. You know, Microsoft goes to market by industry with partners that are experts in that industry. And so we're going to talk about the high-tech industry as it relates to Dynamics 365 and really some of the capabilities that a company like Armanino brings to the table for that industry. So in terms of introductions, you know, my name is Chris Moore once again. I've been a partner with um, Armanino here going on six years. I've been in the Dynamics ecosystem for a little over 14 Prior to that, I was with Anderson Consulting Accenture and really focused around helping companies improve efficiency around supply chain and manufacturing. Um, and so as we get into this, I'll talk a little bit more about Microsoft and our high-tech industry offering as it relates to that. Uh, Scott, you want to introduce yourself? Or Jeff, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff I think I'm just going to open up your line here. Hey, can you guys hear me now? We can hear you now. Thanks, Jeff. We do. All right, perfect. Hey, thanks. So so thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining today. I'm happy to spend a few minutes with you guys um, on this short week. But um, my name is Jeff Russell. I'm the industry practice director for our high-tech industry practice um, here at Armanino. Um, I've been in the high-tech um, industry as a um, from the business perspective for a better part of um, 16 years. and actually implemented um, Microsoft Dynamics as a customer many years ago before I moved into the consulting consulting world. So I'm responsible for our, our, our R&D as well as our kind of overall industry solutions and strategy um, within the Microsoft practice. So happy to be here with you guys today and talk a little bit about Dynamics 365. Scott, are you, uh, you got audio now as well? I'm going to open up, uh, I think this is Scott Fine. Scott, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yep. We can. Fantastic. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, with our, I'm a partner at our firm, and I'm responsible for the front office applications um, elements of Dynamics 365. So this is sales, marketing, customer service, and field service. And like Jeff, been uh, in the high-tech industry for a long time. In fact, I've actually worked in industry. Uh, worked in uh, high-tech manufacturing, uh, clean rooms, distribution, supply chain. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here and share with you some of the things that we're seeing and share some insight with some of the leading high-tech companies um, around the country. All right, guys, thanks. I appreciate it. That was good. Um, once again, Jason mentioned about the polling questions. So I'm going to take, you know, 15 seconds here to give people the opportunity to answer. I mean, it just gives us the opportunity to gain perspective of the areas you know, that you're interested in. So if you guys could quickly go through and just jot down the answer to that, that would be really helpful. Thank you. I'll give you guys just a few seconds. All 
All right. While you're wrapping that up, I'll get going on giving a quick intro on Armanino. So Ar Armanino, we're a public accounting firm. And we've got about 1,000 employees, $225 million in revenue. And we're a traditional tax audit and consulting organization. Consulting is about 45% of our business. Our consulting team is broken out into you know, a handful of different practice areas. We have a team that focuses on business intelligence, helping companies implement analytics across the organization. We have a you know, an, uh, financial planning analysis team, an FP&A team focused around budgeting. We're a reseller of a product called Adaptive Insights and work with you know, small, medium, and large organizations in implementing that tool. We have a revenue recognition team, which is uh, which has gotten, which is, um, which has picked up quite a bit of steam more recently with the ASC 606 revenue recognition requirements, and that's an important part of our overall practice area. We have governance, risk, and compliance area, working with companies around IPO readiness, SOX compliance, SOC work. You know, really a consultant to the CFO. We have a strategy group that works with companies defining roadmaps, assessments, and then of course we have our Dynamics 365 practice and. Our dynamic team is really focused on helping companies select, implement, and provide post-production support around all aspects of the dynamic 365 platform. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, Microsoft goes to market, right, based on the industry and with industry-focused partners. So at Armanino, we have spent a ton of money implementing IP, so software on top of the Dynamics 365 platform related to the high-tech industry that we go to market with with our high-tech companies. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. Um, and another area that's important is that our modules that we do implement are certified for Microsoft Dynamics, and they're also um, either in the app source or in the process of going up on the app source, and Scott will talk more about that here in a bit. At Armanino, we have over 600 Dynamics customers, and we're part of Microsoft's inner circle, which is the top 1% of all partners globally. And um, you know, in the world, there are less than 20 partners, and here in the U.S., we're the number four VAR um, you know, from a, um, a revenue perspective. So Satya, who is the CEO of Microsoft, has done a really good job at redirecting Microsoft down a path of helping customers to obtain what he is calling digital transformation. And I think it's pretty cool because Satya, and uh, many of you probably don't know this, but 10, 12 years ago, Satya ran the Dynamics practice. So this is, you know, the Dynamics 365 is something that's near and dear to his heart. So from his perspective, digital transformation is all about reinventing your organization to be more productive. It's about driving the organization to achieve more results faster. It's about leveraging technology and cloud solutions to evolve and adapt more quickly. And it's funny because when I think of digital transformation, I really think of companies like Amazon and Amazon Prime. If you think about really a disruptive technology that has changed the whole shopping experience, they've transformed technology to really recreate this new method in which people buy things. You can go out to Amazon Prime, you can look at to see how products are rated, you can pick the ones that are most cost effective, you can look at how quickly it's going to take for it to ship to you, and it's a totally different shopping experience. In fact, just yesterday as I was as I was preparing for Thanksgiving and I needed that brine for the turkey, I went out to Amazon Prime, I found the one that was rated the highest, and it, it, they were able to ship it that day and I received it last night about 8 o'clock. So a perfect example of really leveraging technology to solve, a, a, to, to solve a, a real world problem. But I also think of companies like Uber, if you think about being disruptive and really changing the way people think about travel and transportation. But anyways, so that's what Satya means by digital transformation. And his intention is really to make Microsoft Dynamics 365 a disruptive technology for companies. Okay. Go on, Mike. All right, there we go. Sorry. So here are a list of applications that are really part of Dynamics 365. And these applications work seamlessly together to really manage a specific business process, whether it be sales or field service or operations or marketing. So Dynamics 365 and the story around Dynamics 365 is all about what Microsoft's trying to create around the one Microsoft. 
And Dynamics 365 allows organizations to adopt all of these or to adapt the business apps individually. And a really good example is if you take like project service automation, right? You can leverage that capability as a standalone app, right, to manage projects. Or you can combine it with Dynamics 365 operations to collect time and expense and to submit those and go through workflow and then integrate those with HR and payroll systems. And then back in, and then back into your uh, back in financials, you know, all within the operations app. So you can you can leverage one standalone, or you can leverage many of the apps. But if you really think about Dynamics 365, it really breaks down the traditional walls, the traditional ERP um, walls or barriers that have been put in place. And if you look at Dynamics 365, there's something called the Common Data Model, Common Data Service, which really ties all the apps together, so data can be shared across the platform. So when we say high tech, right, we break it out into five different or four different subcategories. So electronic components, so manufacturers of components, sub-assemblies, it might be someone selling to an OEM or a manufacturer. You know, semiconductor or fabulous semiconductor for that matter is also another big market segment. Electronic equipment, so if I'm a capital equipment manufacturer, electronic devices or manufacturing networking devices. And then finally, software and services. Could be a traditional software manufacturer, maybe a, a SaaS software company, or it could be a high-tech company that sells services, software, and hardware. Um, in that case, you know, revenue recognition always plays an important part. But each of the, if you look at each of these groups, have really specific pain points. And we'll talk a little bit about pain points as well as, you know, IP and different um, elements that we've uh, developed within Dynamics 365 to address the industry problems. Later on, I'm going to hit on a couple of case studies, but I just want to give you an idea just as you're thinking about the different market segments of high-tech organization, I want to throw up a representation of a sampling of some of the customers that we've worked with around Dynamics 365 and help them achieve digital transformation. And like I said, I'll go through a couple of case studies here in a bit. So just as, just as Armino has invested a lot of money in high tech, Microsoft has invested over $15 billion in counting in infrastructure to support the growth of the cloud. So as you can imagine, leveraging the cloud gives you the opportunity to scale and to gain efficiency. So this is a depiction of the physical infrastructure that sits on Azure. And so we're going to talk more about the platform. And I'm going to try and turn it over to Scott right now to talk more about Power Apps and App Source and more about Dynamics 365. All right. Thank you very much. Well, I think one of the important things about any enterprise application is the ease of use in terms of being able to extend it beyond the generic uh, vanilla solution that gets delivered uh, by any software provider. And so I'm going to talk to you about two mechanisms for doing that that we're really excited about. Uh, and the first one is called Power Apps. Power Apps is a non-code required development platform, meaning that anyone that uh, has a little bit of training doesn't have to be a software programmer or a coder to be able to extend and to enhance Dynamics 365 with very powerful applications. And it does a couple of things. One is it really allows you to easily connect to other systems and create new data sources. So you can see some examples there on the bottom that have these out-of-the-box connectors. And this is just a few. There are literally hundreds. But you can see it has connectors to Microsoft SharePoint, to Salesforce.com, to Slack, to OneDrive, and that goes on and on with things like Facebook and LinkedIn and um, many other types of uh, application programming interfaces that allow you to exchange data with Dynamics uh, seamlessly uh, with Dynamics 365. You can then go in and build uh, uh, apps without needing to do any code. I'll show you in a moment an example of some drag and drop. And then you can publish those in a responsive environment, meaning that the uh, application knows what device that you're looking at the, uh, at the information on, and it resizes to things like mobile phones, to tablets, to actual um, uh, web interfaces. So on the next slide, Chris, gives you an example of what this can look like. And here are two examples of that uh, interface that doesn't require 
any software programming or code. It allows you to go in and do drag and drop, uh, very quickly build an application, and then uh, and then publish that out. If you kind of advance a little bit, this also now talks a little bit about the pricing too, because it's very affordable. So for an individual programmer, someone that needs to both uh, create applications as well as use the applications, that's only $40 per user per month. And then if you want to run one of those power apps in your, uh, as a personal user or as, a, as an end user, uh, the ability to extend that is only $10 per user per month. So really affordable, very, very powerful. The second way in which Microsoft is enabling high-tech companies to extend Dynamics 365 is through uh, a, a solution called AppSource. And so where Power Apps gives you as an individual organization to extend the Dynamics 365 specific for your organization, AppSource is a way for other third-party solution providers to build it once and publish it to the community of Dynamics 365 users to be leveraged across many different companies. And so AppSource is that exchange, if you will, where um, literally hundreds and hundreds of companies have now put their applications up on AppSource. And if you need things like time and material billing, you need uh, a hospitality solution, you need a supply chain solution, you need visibility on being able to exchange data with your supplier network or integrate with other data sources. AppSource is a, a really rich environment for being able to go out, search for that right business solution to extend Dynamics 365 and, and use that within your organization. So on the next slide, it's just an example of uh, something that Armanino has up on the app source. As I mentioned, there are hundreds of other companies and, and hundreds of other applications. But this is just an example where you can go in, search, and very quickly find a solution. In this case, uh, this is an example of our revenue recognition management solution that's up on the uh, app source portal. On the next slide, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we've done on the front office application. So this is for sales and marketing and customer service to extend the Dynamics 365 application for high-tech companies. And one of those is for high-tech companies that have products that are engineered or they're designed to a specific specification for an end user app, uh, uh, application. And so um, oftentimes high-tech companies will refer to this as design win. And design win, for those of you that don't know, is, is really an opportunity, opportunity management uh, capability that works within a very complex supply chain. So whether you're working with projects or registering designs or managing samples, all of those capabilities can be built on top of Dynamics 365 and extended uh, out into, uh, to, to be leveraged this new way of, uh, of managing a sales process. Um, and it includes managing things like working with, uh, with distributors and manufacturers reps. The next area is around warranty management and product repair. <clears throat> and in this case, we've taken this dynamic CRM for customer service and added to that warranty management and entitlements with the ability to uh, work with a customer on returning materials and authorizing uh, a return material authorization or an RMA and sending those parts back for repair. Field service. We also built out an install base record that allows you to track products that you've sold to your customer, track them by serial number, so that when you're talking with that customer, you can very quickly look up the products that they purchased. And here's an example of a, of a dashboard and some ways to be able to track and manage RMAs as an example. And then the last example in, uh, on the next slide is around quality and customer service. So being able to work in call centers and support things like CAPA, which, is for correct, which stands for Corrective and Preventative Action, to take the customer service things, like maybe you discover things during an RMA process or during a field service visit, that you're seeing some repeated challenges with products or business processes that need to be corrected. So we have the ability to leverage a the, uh, the Dynamics 365 application uh, to support CAPA and customer service. Uh, one good example of that on the next slide is taking advantage of the CRM, what we call CRM portals or customer relationship management portals to be able to support things like customer self-service and knowledge base. And this is an example of the, of the knowledge base that would be available to your high-tech customers 
um, to be able to, to leverage. So a couple of examples, there are many, many companies that are leveraging uh, Dynamics 365 today and are using these extensions and for, that are specific for the high-tech industry. But on the next slide is an example I just kind of wanted to talk to you about, and it's a company called ISSI. ISSI is a about a billion dollar semiconductor company located in Silicon Valley. They've got locations around the world, <clears throat> uh, over 200 users now, and they didn't really have much. They had a homegrown system. It was a portal that they had built. <clears throat> it was getting very antiquated. And so they looked at options um, uh, in terms of the, the kind of the major competitors that are out in the marketplace. And they chose Dynamics, uh, Microsoft Dynamics. And today they're using both the operation side, which they started with, as well as all of the sales, marketing, and customer service, and particularly that design win and samples management and forecast management that I, uh, that I mentioned earlier. On the next slide is an example of a customer service solution. So Regal is a, a, a couple of billion dollar um, technology manufacturing company, and they were coming off of an old Bond ERP system to manage their warranty management and product repair. And they, again, they looked at many of the options in the marketplace. They have an Oracle ERP background or back end and, uh, for their ERP system. And they too chose Microsoft uh, Dynamics, <clears throat> but this time to run all their warranty management and product repair. So we were able to help them put in place a way to set up and track warranties to uh, support an RMA process and even some field dispatching um, <clears throat> with uh, the ability to do uh, pricing or, or to price uh, warranty contracts and to quote for uh, repairs all right from Dynamics 365 um, interface. So great example of, ex again, extending the Dynamics 365 solution for industry-specific capabilities. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide, Chris. All right. I think it's mine, right? You got it. Thanks, Scott. So Scott talked a little bit about uh, more the the front office aspects of the Dynamics 365 um, application, but I wanted to spend a few minutes with you to talk about um, what we're calling and what Microsoft is calling the operations app, um, which really means uh, that the back office, the the financials, manufacturing, procurement, um, what traditionally would be thought of as the ERP kind of side of the application. So as part of the unified application experience. Um, you know, Scott had already talked a little bit about the, the, the framework that is there to enable um, augmenting and building out additional capabilities with AppSource. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about that um, as well in the context of the operations side of the application. And then I'm also going to leave you with um, a little bit of a discussion on kind of the role of business intelligence and how that's factored into the, the overall solution. So this slide here, I'm not going to, certainly not going to go through every single bullet point on here, but um, this is a good representative list of the high-tech capabilities where we've augmented the solution um, with our IP, um, leveraging, you know, outsource, leveraging that, that capability to extend the functionality further for high-tech companies specifically. So a lot of these things hopefully should look very familiar to you. Um, when I look at this, I guess what I, what I typically see is that there are three themes that are prevalent um, in high-tech companies from a requirement standpoint and where systems typically um, can fall short, and that is visibility, flexibility, and complexity. So kind of dealing with the first one first. So on the visibility side, a lot of companies in the high-tech space use a multitude of outsourced manufacturing partners. Um, they need visibility into what's happening there. Um, yield management is critical in the business. Um, so often it's a, in the high-tech space, it's a margin business, and yields can make a dramatic um, impact on profitability of a product line. And then things like distribution, inventory, billings, booking, backlog, things like that all kind of play into that visibility theme. And so those are areas where we, again, have extended the capabilities um, to support those business requirements. From a flexibility standpoint, um, you know, things like consignment relationships, obviously very prevalent in the high-tech space. Um, most of you probably have some element of consignment either on the inbound or outbound side um, of your supply chain today. Um, the splitting of lots in the manufacturing process, maybe substitutions of materials, 
um, things of that that of that nature. That's all part of the flexibility that's again pervasive to to high tech manufacturing. And then, sort of lastly, and it kind of relates to all of these things, but complexity. So that the high tech industry is is a complex one, and requirements are often more complex um, there around supporting things like serial and lot inheritance. So what you know what a component is may affect the the produced item. Um, inverse bill of material, if you're dealing with like a, a fabulous or a um, semiconductor company, um, distribution channels are obviously more complex um, in the high tech space. And then revenue management, last but certainly not least, and and, and very prevalent as, as Chris said, with all of the ASC 606 changes that are coming down and going into effect um, basically January of 18, but retroactively for next year, um, those are certainly things that are top of mind for a lot of uh, a lot of high tech companies. So. Again, this is a, a representative list of the capabilities that we bring to bear. On the BI side of things, Microsoft has a solution um, called Power BI. And Power BI is actually something that after this webinar, if you wanted to go take a look at it, it's free. If you go to powerbi.com, you can get a free, um, just a free account and you can play around with it. But what we've done as a partner um, dedicated to the high tech space is that we've basically focused on building out high tech prepackaged content packs for Power BI. So this is just one example of that, um, a billings, bookings, backlog dashboard. Um, that's something that customers that work with us can have out of the gate as part of their implementation. So certainly that's, that's very, very relevant. Chris, if you go to the next slide. But the real value and the real power in Power BI is the fact that it's built in natively and, and embedded directly in the Dynamics 365 application. So whether you're talking about sales, marketing, some of the materials that Scott was discussing, whether you're talking about operational areas as I've been discussing, the Power BI analytics, the KPIs, the graphs, all of that is available directly within the application. So the user isn't having to go to an external source to review sort of performance metrics. Um, I think that the key takeaway there is that too often businesses think of BI as executive dashboards, and the reality is that this allows really anybody to kind of have visibility into the BI that's important to them. So it could be a production supervisor needing to look at all the queued jobs for a day, but also wanting to see the machine performance that's happening in real time. So those types of things are really where companies can take this full platform and leverage it together to basically get more than just the sum of the individual parts. So that said, let's talk about a couple of case studies. Chris, I'll kick it back to you. Sure, great, thanks Jeff, I appreciate it. Yeah, so, so the next two case studies are actually near and dear to my heart. I was involved in uh, both of the implementations for, from beginning to end, and, and Max Linear is a good story, you know. They're, they're actually now closer to 350 million and 1,000 employees. They made a few acquisitions since we last put this together. But large organization, they're in you know, 10 plus you know, countries. They have you know, 15 plus companies set up in Dynamics AX. But really the key to this story is that they, over time, they've implemented all the sales and marketing capabilities you know, on the Dynamics 365 platform as well as the operation side. So they're using full integration with all their subcontractors. So for, you know, their fabs, they're sending out their build plan and their lot star so they know, you know, how many wafers to manufacture. For their back-end manufacturing, you know, they're sending the starts and then they're receiving back real-time data so they can evaluate yield by operation relative to the different, you know, back-end processes that, um, that they're tracking from a cost perspective. And then their sales team has developed, you know, using that CDM, that common data model, or common data service, really allows them to collect the information for both CRM and AX. So when their sales guys are evaluating an opportunity, not only can they look at quotes and prices, but they can look at shipments, they can look at invoices, they can look at the, the full billing backlog and, um, and bookings information you know, as part of, you know, the visibility, you know, you know, within the organization. So it's just super powerful. And, and if you look at, you know, the, some of the Power BI stuff like Jeff just showed that they've built out to really expose the data across the enterprise, um, you know, we, we in, fun, funny enough, we had them speak at a, a recent AXUG session up here in Northern California, and the sales guy got up and really went through all the stuff that he had built and extended based on what IT had delivered to him. And it was just amazing to look at, you know, some of the data points and key performance indicators that, uh, 
you know, that he really had exposed to the rest of the management team. So great story. If anyone has any questions on Max Lanier and wants to know more information, be more than happy to, uh, to walk you through more details related to them. The next one is, is also a good story. Micro Semi has been a, an, a, a customer of Armanino's now here for almost 10 years. You know, they started off on the 3.0 platform back in, you know, 2003, 2004, and have migrated, you know, consistently up on more recent, you know, platforms of, you know, Dynamics, and, and now they're, you know, up and running, you know, on Dynamics, uh, you know, 365, and we're looking at bringing up, you know, the rest of the organization as well. But um, also a very large company, so Microsemi just recently went through a couple of larger acquisitions and are closer to 2.6 billion in revenue and almost 5,000 employees. But, you know, as an organization, over the last, you know, probably 10 years, they've gone through 20 plus acquisitions and each time they acquire a company, they bring them onto the AX platform. And so they've really put, put together a formula, you know, to, to, um, to make it easy to a, almost like a templated approach as a company is acquired to bring them on, on the AX platform. But they're running all the CRM capabilities, all the, you know, operate Dynamics 365 operations capabilities, fully integrated with their customers and their suppliers, um, you know, full consolidations within the AX platform. And once again, a very large organization. They're in, uh, you know, 35 different countries, and we're in the process with them right now of developing a kind of a shared services model. You know, prior to, you know, the last couple of years, their facilities and their acquisitions were very autonomous and had very, um, um, a lot of autonomy around the kind of P&L reporting. Now they've, you know, they've wanted to really develop shared services around sales operations, around financial management. So we're really helping them strategically change business processes to support that. But good organization, large company, and, and also a real good reference for our Menino and Microsoft. Sorry, Chris, I was on mute. Yeah, so overall, I think, you know, we've spent, spent some time talking about Dynamics 365 and the, the individual um, kind of apps within that. And I kind of just wanted to hit, uh, hit back on this as we had discussed, and I think Chris had alluded to earlier in the presentation, that the power and the, the, the true enablement for, you know, digital transformation is not just because this application itself is powerful, that Dynamics 365 is a powerful CRM and ERP solution. It's the interoperability with the rest of the Microsoft stack. So, Chris, if you build the rest of the slide, um, again, it's the it's the tie-in to um, the, the built-in Power BI. We didn't talk a lot about Cortana Intelligence and Azure IoT, but all of that is integrated fully within Dynamics 365. Interoperability with the Office stack. So, Chris talked about the the user adoption, the familiarity that people have with Office products. Microsoft knows that and leverages that, so that's part of the the solution. And of course, the extensibility, um, kind of the, the bars on the top and bottom that show um, the the apps and the additional um, capabilities that partners such as Armanino um, add to help fully complement the solution and build it directly to serve your high tech business needs. So overall, I hope that you know that that's a a good kind of a way to articulate and explain um, the capabilities of Dynamics 365. We wanted to open it up now to any questions um, and see what you guys might might want to hear from hear from us. So, Jason, I, I think uh, if there are questions, I would see them in the Q and A portion of the uh, the window here. Correct. Yep, that's correct. Um, that's the place to enter them if you have any uh, the Q and A area. Uh, I'm not seeing any other any at this time either. Okay. Well, we can give you a few minutes if or a, a few seconds. We'll if, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, we'll give it. Yeah. Well, the good news is that not only are we on time and on budget, <laughs> we're back to thirty-five minutes. <laughs> so good job, All right. Anyways, well, we in a way appreciate, you know, while we're looking, we appreciate everyone's time today. And uh, and once again, if, if you do have any follow-up items, you can reach out directly to us or, you know, Jason can put you in contact with us. But, uh, 
you know, hopefully you guys are excited about, as excited about Dynamics 365 as we are. We look at it as a, a really a, a strategically, a, a, you know, an awesome direction that Microsoft's gone and, you know, big opportunity for us as well as our customers. So, and, um, and if there aren't any questions, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and, um, and we appreciate your attendance. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you. Bye -bye. Chris, uh, Jeff, and Scott. We will conclude there, and uh, we have a court today's event. Have a great day, everybody.